Welcome into another episode. I'm really excited to be joined today by someone who is uh, obviously playing a huge role on one of the teams that has kind of taken the country by storm this year, USC, and that's Mackenzie Forbes. Mackenzie, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Mark. Super excited. Yeah, yeah no, I'm excited to have you on. I've uh, obviously watched you play for a while, um, so I was you know, very excited to get you on. Obviously, this year has been an absolute blast for you guys, a lot going on, but you know, started catching you with Harvard last year when I first kind of got on the college basketball beat. Um, you know, when when you bring up like this is your final college season now, uh, you look at kind of how long your career has spanned and everything you've you've gone through in terms of getting to where you're at now. Um, what's that feeling kind of like knowing you're midway through conference play now? Yeah, it's definitely bittersweet. Um, like you said, uh, I've had a long kind of stretched out career, um, some ups and downs. Um and, you know, I think I've grown a lot and I think, you know, finishing out this last year at SC, the great year that, that we're, we're having, um, it's been a blessing. Um, I love my teammates. I love my staff. Um, so just feeling grateful, but definitely bittersweet to, to have it be my last year of college basketball. Yeah, no doubt. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. Cause like, I don't know, I was, I, I'm, I'm not that much older than you. I think I'm uh, not, I mean, nah, I think I know I'm only 26, but like I was talking about this with JC Sheldon not that long ago when I was doing a story at Ohio state. And I asked her a question during like non-con play about, um, about their freshman point guard. I don't know if you know of her, but Diana college is going to be really good in time. But I, I've like said it preface JC a question. I'm like, you know, it wasn't that long ago where you were kind of in the same boat. She's like, dude, that's like five years ago. I'm like, you know what, man, when you put it like that, <laughs> you <gotta> it's, go. <laughs> it's like wild thinking about how long, things actually were when uh like I don't know I think of 2018 19, I'm like that wasn't that long I'm like dude yeah that is, years ago. <laughs> that is five years ago um but yeah I mean a lot going on obviously so I guess you know kind of going from that too looking back at um at your trajectory and everything that that you know college has been for you what's kind of like have you gotten a moment to kind of sit back and be like wow okay this is you know I've I've done a lot since I've been here yeah. Um, I don't think I really have like had that moment. I think, like you said, there's so much going on. Everything's so fast paced. Um, like I graduate from Harvard, yeah. like May 28th, I'm on campus June 10th. So it's like, you really just kind of like lock into that next transitional phase. Um, and you know, we go through summer, go through fall. Um, I think the other grad transfers who are, are here with me would say too, like it's going by so fast. Um, but no, definitely like try to give myself those moments of time where I'm like, you know, like be where your feet are, um, and just be grateful for everything that this year is, you know, there's definitely a lot of like reflecting, but also like looking to the future, like you said, like all happening at once. Um, but yeah, I just try to, as much as I can stay in the present moment. Cause like every single game just matters so much, um, especially in pac 12 season. So Yeah. Yeah, the pack season has been nuts. I think is the best way to put it. I, I tweeted this out this morning, but I'm like, dude, every Friday night, I just know that it's going to be kind of insane. And obviously, we get it again tomorrow, too. But Friday, like, I don't know. The Friday night games are always the ones that the just biggest send biggest you. Yeah. I'm like, bro, staying up till 11 on the East Coast. It's like, okay, all right, I know it's going to be hectic. Um, especially keeping up with everything, too. I know, obviously, you guys are keeping on top of everything you're doing. But watching around the pack, is there any team that's kind of like – Taking you by surprise me is the wrong way to put it, but a team that maybe doesn't get the love that you think they should. Um, I think Oregon State is one that yeah. you know, they had they had their good non conference schedule, but I still think people were kind of like, you know, like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see, you know. Um, yeah. and I think even when we beat them at home, I was kind of like, damn, like they're good, you know, and people aren't really talking about them. Um, and you know, as we've seen, they've they've stack some big wins um i think they only have like three losses mm. and it's just like more and more like we've been like hey that that oregon state win is looking real good right now <laughs> you know yeah um so i think that they're, they're definitely i mean scott ruick is always impressive um i don't think you can ever count him out um but yeah i mean like they have beers down there their wings are long um they run their stuff like they're smart they can shoot it like i think they're dangerous um and I think too, like Washington just took Stanford to the OT. Like their defense is nasty all know? year. Like I, I, I tweeted about this yesterday, but like Delea Daniels, I, I think honestly, like, and this is not a like, like Cam is incredible, but like if Cam was not in conference, people would talk about Delea and and Rhea as like the top rim protectors in the league because yeah. goddamn playing against Delea Daniels seems awful. <laughs> well, I think too about Washington is their pace. Like yeah, 
they're going to use that shot clock every single possession. Like I think against us, I don't, I don't know the exact stat, but like to me, there was like at least five times where the shot clock ran out and like, they were kind of like, they weren't even pressed. Like they're like, whatever, like this, this is our game plan. And like, we're going to use every 30 second, every time. I think that plays into their defense as well, because especially for a team like us who likes to get out and run, like it kind of, it just slows you down. Like you're not yeah. getting as many possessions. You're gonna come down. You're gonna play deep for thirty seconds every time. I, I think that that like the way they control pace plays a role in their defense as well. But yeah, yeah I think that every team in the pack, man, anyone could be anyone any night. For real, <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy too because I don't know if you saw the game last night. Well, no, you guys were freaking playing. What am I talking about? But yeah, uh, Washington was down fifteen last night and came back, took the OT. It was crazy. Like and exactly like you're talking about the way that they just. I think they had sixteen points at half. And then, exactly like that's just Husky ball, but no, they're tough. I'm going to be interested to see what happens with them. Um, so obviously, I mean, you started in the pack at Cal uh, with, with coach G she goes to Cleveland and and you go to, to Harvard. Um, what was it like getting recruited a second time, you know, like coming back, or I guess it would be a third time technically coming back to coming back to USC and like already having that connection with her for sure. But like, what is, you know, kind of first conversation like, cause I know transferring is obviously a little bit different when you're um, coming out of the Ivy. Cause you, you know, it's happening ahead of time yeah. compared to some of that. Yeah. So what was that process like for you? Yeah, it was definitely different. So I entered the portal around December. Yeah. Um, so like during the season, uh, coach Moore actually kind of encouraged me to get in there a bit earlier, just so I can, kind of get a uh, a grasp of what I'm looking at. Um, obviously, you still focus on our season, but I think she was kind of just like, it'll be overwhelming if you yeah. do it in March or whenever we end. Um, and grateful that she told me that because I think it did help. But yeah, so I entered in December, um, kind of had like the first round of schools that that got interested then. And then like through March, I, I played really well in March. Then I got like kind of a second round of schools in there. Um, but yeah, talking to Coach G, like, I mean, she's very upfront. I've known her since I was 15, so she's very upfront with me. Um, they had, obviously, a lot of transfers out, grad transfers from last year. Um, she was kind of like, we don't know who's staying, who's going. Like, you know, I don't want you to just come here just because you know me, right? Like, I want you, I want there to be a fit, and this, is not. And she was like, you know, I think you could be good. You know, Juju coming in, like, she's going to need mentoring and, and you know, to be surrounded by maturity and all of that. Um I think Destiny was deciding if she was going to stay or go. I think she had like petitioned for another year. Um, mm -hmm. Destiny Littleton. So when she decided she was leaving, it was kind of like, okay, like here's the spots. Here's what my roster looks like. Here's what I think, what what I'd like to do with you in the offense. And, you know, me and Lindsay can talk basketball for hours. So um, it was just super comfortable. Um, and, you know, obviously coming back, I'm a California kid. So coming back home is nice. Um, and then USC is just, it's like, how can you say no? It's yeah. once I got it's like incredible um and yeah it just felt really good about the team that we the pieces that we had coming in um returning with myself and then with with kp and, and kd also um so yeah i think th the third time around it was a lot less stressful um i knew exactly what i was looking for like okay i need to i want to win but i also want to play i want to make an impact you know i was willing to maybe sacrifice a little more of like Am I get like how many shots am I getting to like are we gonna go far in the tournament? Can we win? Things like that. Um, I think I had a better grasp on. So it it, it all kind of just worked out perfectly. Yeah, no, definitely. Did you like obviously I know you guys had played against one another, but did, did you KP and Katie like know each other at all? Or was that kind of like, you know, you just more from afar and you came came together once you got here? Yeah, it was more from afar. Um, yeah. but it's funny how it all worked out. So KP and I actually took our visit together. Um, I mean, I was always like a fan of her game. Um I mean, you probably go observe when you watch. Like, she doesn't say too much. So, like, she kind of just goes about her business um, and and gets the job done. So, I always respected that about her. And uh, she's a bucket. The first time we played her in Ivy League, I'm pretty sure. Ken was tough. Yeah. Yeah. It was my junior year. <clears throat> and, like, you know, I'm hearing about her. They're like, she's really good. Like, yada, yada. I'm okay. Like, you know, like, like we'll see. I, I knew she was from California, but I had never seen her play. Um, and I'm pretty sure she had like, the first 12 points of the quarter, like, we got down like 12 2 and it was like KP floater, KP three, KP off a of stagger. And I was like, damn, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like she's nice. Uh, so yeah. And then we did our visit together. We got along great. Um, and then KD, I think visited a week or two after the both of us. Um, she kind of like hit us up in a longer time. I was like, we, we doing this. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, um, 
worked out great. And like, I, I love those guys. And it's funny. We, we chat about the Ivy league scores all the time. <laughs> That's funny. It's so cool too. Cause like going back, I, cause not just the gush, but like, I'm really excited for Harvard. Like coach Moore really has her stuff together. I really loved what you guys did last year. And obviously they've dealt with a bunch of injuries last this year, which has been tough, but um, building some good stuff there. But like looking at the Ivy, I think what she brought up was so interesting too. Cause like, again, just like knowing staff, so like, they see stuff towards the end of non-conference, but then as soon as it gets into like big time in conference play, schools kind of back off a little bit. They're more like, you know, on their, on their, on their own stuff. And um, so that's awesome that she gave you that feedback because not every coach is doing that. Um, yeah. But again, I think that's part of the benefit of like being the Ivy too, because it's just a different atmosphere with that for sure. Um, yeah. And speaking of like, I am the Ivy grad transfer class this coming year is like wild to think about. Cause like, I think, I know, I, I don't think Abby declared yet, but I know she can technically. Um, Cause Abby, she was in Columbia. I don't think Abby has a. Oh, wait. No, she doesn't. That's right. Cause she took the year off. Yeah. Um, I didn't think about that. I know that Caitlin Chen does. Yeah. And she was killer today, as always. She's so good. One of the best slashers in the country. So elite. <laughs> yeah. That Princeton team. And then, yeah, that Princeton team's just nasty. We were actually today in the locker room, we were doing a, a like, build your Ivy, like, all time like starting <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i love that um no yeah the, the ivy is crazy um but you know going from there too in terms of looking at this year you mentioned uh obviously coach she bringing up you know juju and, and mentorship i think it's easy for someone like me who like i don't know i've watched juju plays for you know two years now before she get, even, even got to school so i'm like i had an inkling of you know what this would look like but you know, when you're a player who maybe hasn't been around that and you've been locked in on college, how does, you know, what was kind of like selling you guys on that? Like, you know, because I think it takes a pretty special group to be willing to come in and, um, you know, it's pretty rare to have a player who's a true freshman that comes in and can do this kind of level of thing. But it also takes a really, again, a really special group to to be bought in around that too. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like I, I didn't really watch like her ascension. Like I, I knew like her senior year, obviously, like, you know, you see the highlights and everything. Yeah. And I like I was I was sold on that, honestly. But um <laughs> yeah. and I also so funny enough, I coached like seventh and eighth grade girls during my gap year, which I think was like 2019, 20, like little like before COVID slash into COVID. Um, and so that class is like juniors and seniors now. Like Jazzy Davidson, I don't know if you're familiar coming yeah, out. No, of I, know, I know who that but, is. Um like I coached that class, I coached against Jazzy and stuff. So I knew like that class. And so when I saw Ju, I was kind of, she's like a year or two older than them. Mm -hmm. And I was like comparing in my head. So like, I kind of had that, like, like, you know, I saw it and and I, I, I could see the like generational like talent that she is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there was much selling. Like, I think for us, you know, we all played our, our years in the Ivy and I think um, we want to win. And so like to me like great players want to play with great players so it was never it didn't take much much selling for me I, I think I was I was sold immediately <laughs> yeah or I guess yeah selling is probably the wrong way to put it but I just like I don't know like when was there like maybe a moment when you guys first came together that you realized like okay like Juju is this level of player like because again <laughs> like you can have an idea of who somebody's going to be because like yeah. again like okay. I thought Juju would be like an all-conference level player off that like I thought she was going to be that good this level is like the the I don't know like again like not to completely gush but like you you pull FIBA FIBA U19s or it was I think it was U17s from like uh 2022 and she was awesome like she was really good on that team but it's like mostly an off ball scorer like coming off staggers and curls and doing her thing that way like doesn't fully have like her dribble all the way together but you see like the flash of the athleticism and stuff then three months later she's at Sierra. And it's like, oh, wow, like, okay, this – because obviously, I mean, they played a nuts schedule at Sierra last year, so you know it's for real. And, like, she's, like, pulling all these way smoother combos together. Her feel for the game is – her playmaking is even better. And then you take the jump from, like, Sierra to this year, and it's just like – I was – the first game watching against Ohio State, I was just like, holy shit. Okay, this is, like – that's different. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go well, ahead. I guess that um, – so we got here in the summer – and, you know, you have, like, small group workouts, um, a little bit of playing. Um, and I was, like, I saw it. Like, I was, like, she's really freaking good. Like, 
She's athletic. She has the handle. Her jumper is smooth. Like she has feel. Like her finishing package, you know, um, mm-hmm. her pace, all of that. And I think I was like, yeah, like, we're, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty good. And I think we get into fall, and we're still like going through preseason, right? And like we finally have our first scrimmage against uh, the the men's like the practice squad, mm-hmm. like real scrimmage, like refs. We're gonna do four quarters. We're gonna have starters, rotations, all of that, right? And I think she had like 18 in the first quarter or maybe like the first quarter in a little bit of time. Yeah. I think she ended with like 33 or something. And I remember after that, like we had like a visit or something and we're at the football game. And I like said to her, I was like, you like you were fucking around in the summer. Like, oops, excuse my language. I was like, you were you you were messing around in the summer. Like this is like like you just brought it out. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I that was the first time where I saw like flip switch like Juju like like you said, like Ohio State, Stanford, like, you know what I mean? Like, that was when I was like, okay, like, she has something really, like, different in her. Um, Because I think, I don't know, like, in, in smaller group workouts, you're doing, like, skill work and, like, breakdowns, like, maybe pick and roll breakdowns. But, like, when, once that game clock, like, hit, I was like, oh, yeah. She's, yeah. She's... <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was crazy, too, because, like, I I was so excited about it as soon as the game got scheduled because I was like, that's – I mean, I mean, because you you went through it as a freshman. Like, I, I don't. I mean, obviously, guys didn't play Ohio State when you were a cow. But like, again, like that's the the kind of environment where you're like, okay, you're really gonna see how somebody plays. You're playing against an extremely veteran team. They just said Celeste Taylor's like arguably the best perimeter defender in the country, and they play this incredibly difficult press that it just like obviously you can you can practice for it. But again, like it's your first college basketball game yeah. on a neutral floor playing against that team. And like again, it's just exactly what you said. It's the first first buck. It's just the comfortable pull up in transition. Like, oh, okay, like we're good to go. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That that was another part of like the Celeste matchup. Like, I remember being like, that didn't seem to phase her. Like, you know, like yeah, no, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that was crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, like just looking at the season as a whole too, and and kind of how everything started off. Obviously, you guys go. I believe it was Bahamas, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So go to the Bahamas. That was a very fun uh, tournament. Um, when was like kind of the first moment where you guys were maybe starting to feel like this could be a pretty special year? Like, obviously, I mean, it seems like it was before the season even started, but was, is there maybe a game or something in your mind before pack play that was like, that really solidified for you? I mean, I think Ohio state, even though it was the very first one was a good, like feeler. Yeah. It was like, I think we were ranked like 21st or something coming into yeah. it. Um, and what's interesting about the first game of the season too, is you have like, a, you basically have like a month to prepare, you know, who you're going to play, you know, versus all these other games, you have like a couple days. Um, and obviously we're like, okay, the press, like you break the press, you're, you're fine. Yada, yada. But I think that game really gave us like a huge confidence boost, just going like to like, kind of just thrust us through, all of um non-conference um but I, I don't know i mean i think when we lost when we were down a couple people like and we had to do fullerton long beach and we and we tough those out like i think that really showed like our depth mm-hmm. um but as far as non-conference i don't know i think the two uclas um was really good for us in terms of growth um even though we lost the first one it was still a moment where i was like okay like we can be really freaking good. Like we, we didn't play well. We turned the ball over. Um, we just weren't poised offensively, but it, and all of that. And we still only lost by what, like six or seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we know people are talking about them as, as a final four contender. So after that one, I thought like, you know, we could be pretty special, but, and, and even coach Lindsay said something. I, for, I forgot if it was after the first or the second UCLA, but she was like, you know, if anything, what this proves is like you can have final four potential, but you could also go and lose your next four in the pack. You know, like if you want to, you can go this way, you know, but if you want if if you can also go the exact opposite direction, you know, it's kind of all up to us and how we approach and how we attack everything. Um, and I think that's very true for this team. Like I think when we're locked in and we're at our like highest potential, we can we can play with anyone. I think if we come out and we're not all the way there we're not firing um you know like 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 we said like you can lose to anyone in the pack so 
I think a lot of it is is in our control, but I, I definitely do feel good about the potential we have. Yeah, it's so interesting too, because like you mentioned, I felt like I really learned most about you guys during that stretch where you, where you had injuries. Um, because at first I was like, all right, I as soon that I mean that's what was so fun in watching at the beginning, because you guys did what you did to Ohio State, and then uh, I can't remember who you played before, but then came out and played against Penn State, and Penn State like Penn State's really good this year. But they were the first team that was like, we're not letting you guys get to the Iverson series. Like, it's just not happening that entire game. I was like, because I was really excited about that. I was wondering when a team was going to do that, because that was the entire Ohio State game. I think you guys ran Iverson like 45 times for Juju, and rightfully so. Um, but then Penn State just comes out, like, we're just not letting you do it. And it was a really ugly first half, and then you guys came together. Obviously, I mean, that that fourth quarter was tremendous. But again, like leading up to that, um, I felt like, you know, you guys started to hit the balance. Like, OK, well, um, the stretch where you started to get get integrated and it felt like you really hit your stride and, and have just been in the fold and steady since then. Um, yeah, it's been really fun to watch, like just kind of seeing all of that come together, because, again, like when you have so many new pieces together, you never really know quite how it's going to fit. But I think what was so fun is like in my head right away in the offseason, like I can totally see how this fits, because, again, like going backwards, like. I, I thought KD was one of the most underrated players in the transfer portal. Like people can look at her box score and maybe not think that much, but like she unlocks so much for what you guys do, especially defensively. Like I wrote about it this morning. So I was like, you know, yeah, I actually, I took a glance at that for practice. So that was, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, like, cause just watching again, the other, I was like, God damn, she's so good defensively and like just unlock so much. And just everything is so cohesive together. Um, I don't remember where I was going with that. I was just gushing about how you guys play. But, um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned the Stanford game, too, obviously. And that is, like, I mean, that's one of the games of the year and the way that you look at everything, like playing at Maples. Um, and, again, like you mentioned in terms of kind of learning about yourselves, like coming off of two really difficult games, really needing to course correct. What was the feel going into that game? Um. Yeah, I mean, post-Washington – Obviously, like the vibes were down. We felt like, like I said, like we felt like that was in our control. Mm -hmm. um, so that was definitely a big letdown. But I think like the message that whole week was like, you know, nobody like nobody gives a fuck. Like no one cares. Mm -hmm. Like nobody cares when you beat Stanford. Nobody cares when you lose Washington. Like everyone's on their own thing, you know. And so it was kind of like there's no feeling sorry for us. Like all we can do is like everyone get better at, at what you bring. Um, so I think that was the mentality. I know like Jew – had a rough week, like mentally, like she's so hard on herself. Um, and I even like kind of like saw it in practice of like the frustration and the like, you know, just wanting to see it fall. Um, I mean, from an outsider's perspective, I'm always like, dude, like you're so good. Like <laughs> it's going to be fine, you know, but it's different when, when, you know, you have all that weight on your shoulders. And so I know that she put a lot of extra work in that week. I think we all did. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we were just super locked in going into Stanford. We felt like we could go in there and get a win, uh, barring, like, that incredible performance. We felt like we had a good game plan. Um, felt like matchups on the perimeter, like, you know, we felt like we we had that. And then I think on the interior, it was just, like, we knew our posts were going to have to work hard as hell. And they did. We we used 20, about 20 fouls on, on Brink and uh, Kiki. Uh, but it got the, got the job done. Um, hey, whatever whatever it takes to get to the final score with it in your favor, that's all that matters, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, we felt we I wouldn't say we felt good going in there, but we felt like we could get a win that we needed. Um, we knew it was a big weekend, and then obviously Juju just goes Kobe Bryant mode. Yeah, <laughs> so that was pretty insane. It was funny. I was texting one of my friends as soon as the game starts, and well, not even as soon as like probably like a quarter, and I'm like, hey this is like kind of nuts. And cause Lindsay talked about it at halftime and during her like halftime interview. And she like mentioned like, Oh, if, if like, cause they asked her about like Juju, like on track to score a bunch. She's like, yeah, if we, we need to score 50, she's like, I'll take it. But like, it was more like, it's not just like heat check stuff. It was all like, it, it was, everything felt like the right decision, which is like, that's just rare stuff. Was there like, again, like in that game and especially going back through film, um, what was kind of like the feel throughout it? Like kind of just obviously like you're locked in on the game and like, and winning it, but as it starts to climb to where it's at, like, do you kind of get a sense of that? Obviously the bench did. I think the bench very much got a sense of that, but like, 
is there kind of a moment in the game where you start to feel like, oh, wow, okay, this is like something special? Yeah, so when when she had her first quarter, I was like, not We've right seen that before. Like, yeah, regular, like, yeah, you know, like, right away <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, is she going to have a night? Um, Even like with 25 at half, I was still like, I feel like she's had like 21 at half before. Yeah, no, for sure. Expecting maybe they'll come with something different. Um. It's interesting, like the coaching styles, like obviously Tara is like Tara's game plan, you know, and she's done it for however many years and it works. Um, you know, you go into it wondering, like, okay, are they still going to be in a deep drop? Like they're just going to sit rank in the paint, which is like what they do. Mm -hmm. Like, but, you know, Juju makes a killing off that pull up um, coming off screens, which she was doing in the first half. Um, you know, like, are they going to send a double whatever? So I figured they would come out and maybe do something different in the second half. And I think we came out in the third. If I'm not wrong, she had like the first 12 points. Yeah. Like she went from 25 to 37 or 38 with the three. It was like the three by our bench. Mm -hmm. like she That was 38. And then they called a timeout or it was media yeah. or something. That was the one where I was like, okay, like this is insane. And I, yeah. and like, like you said, like, I was playing in the game, so I'm like, I'm so locked in. Like, I didn't really, I wasn't really, like, I was aware that she was cooking, but, like, I wasn't really, like, like, maybe how the bench was reacting. Like, I couldn't, like, because I was just like, okay, come down, and now we need to, like, smash brink, you know? Like, it was just yeah. so intense. And it was a close game, you know? It wasn't like she had 50, and we were, like, up by 20, and it was fun, you know? Like, yeah. it was, like, stressful. Like, I was stressed. <laughs> so, but once she hit that, like, it was, like, a little sidestep three, I was like, yeah, this is about to be insane because there was still like six minutes left in the third and she had 38. I was like, she can go for 60, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I go to that timeout and like, yeah, the crowd's going insane. And then I remember back out of that timeout was when like, you could hear it from even the Stanford crowd. Like there wasn't really like a cheer when she would score. It would be just kind of like a, like, it was like a low, like murmur, like from the crowd. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it was literally like out of a movie, you just kind of hear him like, ooh, like, ooh. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, everyone was kind of like, like this is going to be like historical, you know? Um, so yeah, but I just remember like finally at the end, I think when she hit like her last free throw was when I could kind of like laugh slash like smile about it on the court. So I was like, okay, we have, we have the game one, you know, yeah. but it was weird being like so locked in, but like that's also going on. And I think too, in a weird way, like Stanford was trying to kind of junk up their defense. Like they went to that triangle in two, one possession. I think it would kind of mess with them mentally like on offense too like I think it just kind of completely brought them out of their like flow you know because they're such a rhythm team and they do they're very methodical they do the same thing on defense the same thing on offense like in a weird way it seemed to like get them out of their like comfort even on the offensive end because it was like we're trying to do all this stuff we've never done on defense you know what I mean like it, it no was that makes sense because it felt like honestly every time that they took a shot it was like all right we have to get back ASAP because it felt like, I mean, I think in the first half, she scored like half her points just in transition and not getting picked up fast enough. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it definitely felt like it impacted them later on. And they missed some bunnies too. Like, obviously, you guys did as well, not trying to negate it. But, like, it's just, yeah, it very much felt like they were kind of in their heads a little bit with it, which how can you not be? Because that was just, like, insane. Because that's, again, that's the other thing too. Like, half the shots are just like, how the hell do you hit that? Like, it's not just like wide open, you know, and hand in your face, like good defense, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was that was wild. But I, I felt like to me, because exactly like you're saying, like that game was so close too, which is I think what makes it feel even different. But like you hit the I don't remember the exact time on the clock, but the pull up like just inside the arc as the clock's draining, that was the one where I was like, oh, okay, they're winning today. Like that's if we're if we're getting that kind of fuck it too. Like obviously you hit those often but like especially in the moment i was like oh wow okay this is usc's game today what was the feel on that shot because it was yeah. that was that was like honestly that was like the toughest shot of the game i didn't realize in the moment how big we need like how much we needed that like yeah. we were in a little bit of a drought yeah because fourth quarter they started sending extra pressure to her and they're like okay yeah. we're just not gonna let you get the ball and yeah i think there was maybe like a minute 40 or something maybe a little under but yeah i mean in that moment like I knew that they, that was when they started blitzing Jew, and so I knew that it would the shots would might like come out of a like scramble type situation, um, and even with Jew like scoring how she was like you know like KP and I especially like always have to be ready to like yeah. hit a shot, um, 
So I think rocks, I think rocks swung it. And I, as it was coming, I glanced at the shot clock and I saw like three and I was like, I'll try to just get to like a one. I didn't want to just shoot a three. Cause I felt like, you know, I want to get something to the rim. Maybe we can get an easier O board or something. But then when I took that one dribble, I was like, I don't even have time to like plant. Like I just gotta, I just gotta go off off one and then thank the basketball gods it went in. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. That was an insane game, and I'm sure we have more coming down the pipeline in Pac-12 play too, which cannot wait for. Um, a couple more things before we get into to more, but like, where did the peace sign start? Because I feel like I haven't seen anything about that. It started very subtly early on in the year. Obviously, I know you does it, but like. It's now just been adopted by everything. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. That's the fight on. That's the USC. Uh, that is the stupidest question I've ever asked. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> I am not going to. Wow. Wow. That is. Uh... Damn. Okay. Pretend I never asked that. It stands, I... for, victory. It stands for victory. People don't know that part, though. Because I had to learn that. Known that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, my only defense is that I didn't grow up on the West Coast. So um, okay. <laughs> I should know Let that. Let it slide. Let it slide. <laughs> you, know, you know sometimes. But. Uh, yeah, one of the things that's been really fun in talking, obviously, like I know the reason I, I mean, I, I wanted to get you on for a minute, but like I hit up PR because, um, uh, you did that interview with Autumn Johnson. I don't remember after which game, I think it might've been the Oregon state game, but coach, she commented on it. What it was UCLA? Maybe? It was UCLA. I trust, honestly, my head is so all over the place I, that you're, you're, you're probably right. Um, but coach, you commented on it that you, you know, working in an, in an NBA front office soon. And I'd seen written somewhere too, that you want to work in a front office someday. And, and, you know, I wanted to ask where that comes from, because I feel like it's pretty rare for a player, especially like you have legit pro aspirations and ability um, to like, know that this early, that that's something that you want to do. So, you know, what kind of instilled that in you? For sure. Um, honestly, two people were huge um, and inspiring me in that way. And I think one would be coach G um, when she went to, to Cleveland my freshman year, um, that was the first time I was kind of really like, I, I always knew I wanted to coach um, and like, obviously like be a head coach and all that. But that was the first time I was like, but you know, why, like if Jeezy can do it, like, why can't I coach in the NBA, you know? Um, so that was huge inspiration. And then uh, also my freshman year, Rasay Caldwell, uh, Rasay Fox now, mm -hmm. um, she was a grad senior when I was a freshman um, and she was interning with the Warriors that whole year, like doing basketball ops stuff, um, like pre-draft scouting, like chopping film for them, um, player development workouts. Like she would literally go, we, we practiced at like noon. So she would go to the Warriors 8 a.m. to like 1030, come back, we'd practice. And she was like online with her master's. So that to me was like incredibly inspiring um, and like, I think it was that moment where I was like, okay, like this is like, I want to do that as well. Um, like at that level. Um, so those two, that's, that's honestly like what planted it in me, uh, my freshman year. And then when I was at Harvard, I met with a player development coach uh, with the Celtics and cause I kind of was like, oh, I like, you know, I like hands-on, like I, I like player development. Um, like maybe I want to do that. And, and I met with him and he was kind of like, you know, why do that? Like, he's like, you should be in a front office. Like you should, you should run the whole thing. Like you, you have a Harvard degree. And I was like, facts, like he, he yeah. kind of made that. So I think a combination of, of all that, um, and just kind of figuring out, you know, in what way I want to be involved and at what level, um, kind of led to those aspirations. That's awesome. Um, so like, okay, so what is your, when you, when you're in the background, how a outside of what you guys are watching for, for scouts, like how much basketball are you watching? I'm assuming a lot. Yeah, a lot of basketball. Uh, my yeah. brother, actually, he plays at St. Mary's. Uh, so, obviously, watching his games. Um, I don't have, like, league pass or anything. I need to just invest in it. But just, like, anytime I can get in the NBA, like, on ESPN or my HBO uh, Max. Having uh, on Max this year has been nice. I've loved yeah, that. Max because, yeah, Max is so nice. That, that's, like, that's new, right? That's just, a, yeah, that's just this year. Yeah. Like, that's brand new. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really watch, like – anything else honestly like um I don't really watch series or anything like that so I'm always watching basketball or if there's like a good girls game on um you know and then obviously do NBA so I, I really just kind of have always been that way um I think it helped a lot with my IQ especially like when I was younger like middle school high school like I would just watch it a lot um and I think it's kind of an underrated thing in terms of like teaching IQ is like especially for high school girls, it's like, 
just watch you know just like you pick up so much i feel like just just consuming so yeah yeah oh uh, and regular listeners are gonna be annoyed because i say this all the time but like one of my really good friends worked for the grizzlies and so he's like a little bit older than me and i, I brought up with him like when i first started because i was originally like i wanted to be a pro athlete that did not work out the way things were you know if that's how, how things go but like you know i went from not watching like much it was just kind of like in the background for me to watching all the time because i went from you know working out eight or nine hours a day to oh hey i have to do like other stuff and um I remember like asking him, like once I, once I first met him, like, dude, like, how do you get to like understanding all this stuff? He's like, honestly, it's the worst answer ever, but just watch more. And it's crazy. Cause he told me that like three years ago. And now I think about like, I don't know, like I look back at things that I, I wrote or said in in like 2021 and I compare it to now. And I'm like, Oh wow. Holy shit. He was right. Like, you know, like you see so much more as time goes on. Like I, I think like I like compare it to almost like the thing from Shrek. Like it's like an onion, you know, you peel it and except it's like out inwards. I mean, it goes like outwards instead of inwards. You just keep layering stuff and you seeing it, yeah. see it more and more. And um, yeah, it's cool. Cause I feel like, I don't know. I just like keep learning more and more about the game and it's awesome. And that's just like kind of never going to stop. It's funny too. Like, thinking about my freshman year in the pack to now, like I'm just so much more conscious and aware of like scheme, like defensive schemes and like how they're playing us, how they're guarding you, how they're guarding me, like how are they guarding the ball screen, you know, like how heavy is the nail help, like things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, where I feel like my freshman year, like I was like, like thinking about now, I'm like, bro, I was just out there playing, like I was just out there <laughs> yeah. playing around, you know, um, which is crazy. But another thing too, I- I'm not exactly sure if it was him, but I'm pretty sure it was De'Aaron who said like, playing 2k like helped with his iq like even just like the movements and stuff and making your reads like literally like on the video game like can help i feel like maybe like even for high school like like that that could be helpful just seeing yeah. rotations and stuff yeah it sounds like so minute but seriously just like thinking the game through it all is like massive in in understanding stuff and it's kind of like again not to keep harping myself but like i wrote about that this morning a little bit because part of what's been so fun to watching you guys like the defense has legit been like so fun to watch and i was bringing this up with somebody the other day because one of the things i really want to see more in the nba and pro basketball in general is like helping from two passes away because so much of right now like especially i mean like you you came up in aau like now that all these people who coming up through aau like came up after the ball screen proliferation of like what the warriors did everybody can make pick and roll reads if you can't make pick and roll reads you're not a pro like that's just how it works um so like okay if you help from one pass away people can pick that apart so easily. And like one of the things you guys have done this year is helping from the slot a lot. And especially in in the game that you guys won against UCLA, you did that. And it's just like little things like that where you disrupt reads and it makes things different. Like a lot of teams just have never seen that before because people don't do it very often. And it's like something, again, super minute, but it's the, that's the the small things that excite me. But um, yeah. (laughs) What other things do you kind of do? Like, do you ever like test yourself on like GM stuff or like, are you like going and doing like random fan- fantasy drafts in, in 2k or like kind of what's, what's, uh what's the process with that? No, I, I've been in contact with like a couple teams um, nice. out here, just like shadowing and honestly just like learning more about like what it is in the role. Um, But yeah, no, I, I haven't done any of these self fantasy drafts, but I, I definitely would say like, I have a lot to learn in that regard um in terms of like the draft and all of that stuff um but yeah um I think I'm super like I think I have a great mind for the game but I think in those particularities like I could definitely like I, I have a long way to learn yeah no I'm excited for you because especially coming with your background like I, like you mentioned went to Harvard obviously have hooped at an extremely high level and have good people skills like that's it's not easy to find all three of those things so um you're on a good path Thank um you. yeah no for sure um you know last couple of things in before you're out here obviously i know like you're not done playing yet you guys have a lot to do moving forward what are you most looking forward to as the year closes out you know what things what kind of goals do you guys have and um you know both as a team and as an individual yeah um it, it's interesting like the season has felt like so short but so long like in the same breath um, yes like, i agree finally after this after Monday when we play U of A, like we'll have played everyone in the pack, which seems crazy. Like that does seem crazy. I've played anyone twice besides UCLA. Um, it's definitely like finishing out second half strong, I think is huge for us. Um, I'm like super 
like obsessed with like our tournament like seating <laughs> like i'm like guys. well hey i just started doing bracketology for the really? athletics so i um, i'll hit you up when i know what uh what's the <laughs> i have you guys at i have to file that on wednesday so yeah, yeah. No, I, I love it um but yeah so i think it's super important for us like to get like a good seating um mm -hmm. and, and obviously like in the pac 12 tournament as well i think like I still don't even think we've necessarily like hit our stride with like everyone clicking at the same time. Like, I think everyone has had their moments and like, I think we're getting more comfortable overall, like gelling, but I still think like we have not reached our peak yet at all, like defensively, but especially like offensively. Um, I think our last two games, we scored like 79 and 81, which has like been like higher. That's like on the higher end for us, I think in mm -hmm. Pac 12. Um, but I feel like we should be like in the 80s and 70s upper 70s 80s every night if if we play you know what we're capable of but yeah just finishing out Pac-12 strong um and like making a deep run in March I think you know I always am like when we win everyone wins you know like yeah. I think for everyone to reach like their individual goals like all Pac-12 you know you name it um for us seniors you know for our professional careers for Jew, like, you know, she's in that national player of the year, freshman of the year conversation. Like we need to win to, to make all those things reality. I think that's like an underrated part um, that maybe outside looking in doesn't see it as that like your team winning matters so much, you know? Yeah. Um, so just super locked in on that. Um, and I think like, obviously it being my last year, like I'm just so willing to like give everything <laughs> for the team to the team. Um, and yeah, hopefully like closing out strong. So, uh, and then personally, like I want to, you know, make an all pack 12 team. Um, didn't do that as a freshman, obviously. Um, and hopefully like play deep in March so I can really, you know, showcase my abilities on a, on a national stage. I think being here has already like done so much for me in, in terms of just like being in the spotlight, um, you know, thanks to our team and, and thanks to, you know, Juju being the player that she is and, demanding the attention that that she brings so yeah that's just kind of my hopes and, and goals for the rest of it well i'm really excited to see how that how you guys finish out you've obviously been a blast so far this year um especially too i can't wait for the rematch with oregon state because i was talking to Levon olhoff in the other day and they have taken that loss to task and like I don't know if you see much of them, but right like you guys were the first team that really started to um to double on the catch against Reagan beers and she struggled a lot passing out that game just gotten a lot better since then so I'm excited to see what that looks like moving forward but um yeah Mackenzie thank you so much for making the time it was really dope to get to know you I'm, I'm excited to again excited to keep watching excited to keep watching your career anything you want to shout out before we got here I don't know, shout out. No, I, I ain't got nothing crazy, but fight on. Fight on. <laughs> no, no, yeah, fight on, as I know I now. Know. <laughs> to, to everyone listening, thank you for listening. And most importantly, have a great rest of your day.